next week we're going to continue our lesson uh, 3-5 talking about linear equations and specifically uh, when they are written in slope intercept form. And to think back to our notes from uh, yesterday that we completed, uh, we learned that y equals mx plus b is in slope intercept form, m being the slope, b being the y intercept, and we found how easy it is to actually graph the linear equation using this y intercept and then counting rise over run using the slope value given in the equation. Very, very time efficient um, instead of making those x, y, you know, tables of ordered pairs um, and whatnot. So we talked about how to do that. If you look at your notes today, uh, what I want to do is I want to begin with the following line, okay? Uh, what I would like to do is first, um, let's talk about how you would find the slope of the line given on your graph there. We know that uh, we would count, we would find points on the line, and we would count rise over run, okay? Um, here's the y-intercept value, which looks to be at 0, 4. And I'm going to find some other points on that line. Okay? There we go. Now, I could count rise over run from any two points, right? Rise would be negative 2 because I'm actually falling. And my run would be a positive 3. And that will be consistent between any two points on uh, my line. So the slope of this line would be negative 2 over 3, right? So, uh... If we just redefine a couple of things, and we'll come back to that graph in a second, it says slope is defined as, and we call that the rate of change, okay? Specifically, right, uh, it's how y changes compared to how x changes. That's why when we write the slope, the, um, the answer is always initially written as a ratio, meaning fraction. Okay, because it's really a comparison between the vertical change and the horizontal change, or you might know that as the rise over the run. Okay? Now, what if, though, I don't give you a picture of the line like I did up here, and I said, you know, find me its slope. Well, if I don't have a picture of the line, I can't obviously count rise over run. So what I want to show you today, how to do today is how we can um, use just two, any two points on the line and determine the slope. Okay, so let's identify two points on this line. Well, let's just use these first two that I used here. So this point um, here is at an ordered pair of 3, 2. And the point here is at 6, 0. Okay, so I am going to write those ordered pairs down here in my notes, 3, 2. And the other ordered pair was 6, 0. And what I want you to look at here is how we could actually find the slope without using the graph. Okay? So, but let me go back up here and show you something. So if I go back up here, now watch. Okay? Because this can be kind of tricky here. When we counted rise over run, if we just look at these two points here that I have written down. Okay? Um... If I count rise over run, we've already decided our rise is a negative 2, right? What you're really doing is if you look at the y coordinates, remember this is the xy and this is the xy, okay? If I look at the two y coordinates here, what you're really doing is finding the difference between those y coordinates, right? So if I take 0 and subtract 2, that would give me my negative 2. Okay, so 0 minus 2, if you take this y value and subtract this y value, that would be our rise, which is a negative 2. Okay, now to get the run value this direction, what you want to do is you want to look at the difference in your x values. So if you take this x value, 6, and subtract the other x value, that will give you your run, which we got to be a positive 3, hence our slope of negative two-thirds, okay? So what we're really doing is, given two ordered pairs, we're taking the y values and subtracting those because we're finding the difference between uh, the y value of the first coordinate and the y value of the second coordinate, and then we're taking the difference of the x coordinates. That's your vertical change over your horizontal change, okay? Now, um, if I write that right here again so you can see what I'm doing here, 
We really did 0 minus 2 to get negative 2, okay, which means I subtracted my y coordinates. And then we subtracted our x coordinates. We did 6 minus 3, which gave us 3, hence our slope of negative 2 thirds. Okay? Now, that leads us to this very, very famous formula, the slope formula, which is this right here. M equals, remember M is slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That is a formula you will use like every day almost for the rest of your math career. Okay, it's, it's just one of those things that you know. Okay, just like you know area of a rectangle is what it comes with, you will always know that the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now you may say, what in the world do these twos and ones mean? They're just identification purposes. It's just there for identification purposes. Mathematically, you don't, they don't do anything. It's just to identify one ordered pair from the next. So for example, um, in the two... Uh, order pairs we wrote up above, the 3, 2, and the 6, 0. The 3, 2 was my first ordered pair, so I would call it x1, y1, because those are coordinates of the first ordered pair. The 6, 0 would be x and y coordinates of my second ordered pair, so it would be x2, y2. And then if you look at how I calculated that, I took my y sub 2 value, which was 0, and I subtracted my one sub, y sub 1 value, which was 2, and that gave us a rise of negative 2. Then we took our x sub 2 value, which was 6, and we subtracted the first x value right here, which was uh, 3. And that's how we got a run of 3. Okay. So again, those 1s and 2s are just there to identify the first ordered pair from the second. And the question always comes up, well, what if I wrote them down differently? What if I put 6, 0 as my first ordered pair and 3, 2 as my second ordered pair? you're going to get the same answer, okay? So don't worry about that. doesn't matter what order you put them in. But you have to make sure if you do, that you do y2 minus y1, you have to then do x2 minus x1. In other words, you can't do this. You can't do y2 minus y1 and then do x1 minus x2. That is a big no-no. y2s go first and x2s go first, okay? You have to keep the order the same. Or that's totally going to mess things up, okay? So real simple formula. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to do some uh, practice problems or examples with you. So look at number five in your notes. Write down the following order pairs, 4, negative 1, and negative 3, 6. These two points are on a line. Okay. If you would like, I could get out a sheet of graph paper and I could plot these points. I'm just going to estimate 4, negative 1, and negative 3, 6. So my guess, just by you know, estimating what these two points are and connecting them, this slope, whatever answer I get, should be a negative answer because I can see that that line is going downhill just by estimating where those points are on a grid, okay? So let's see if we don't, in fact, get a negative answer. First thing I want you to do, this is essential, and this is the, the, part, this is the part that my lazy, 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 lazy boys and girls want to skip, and then they mess up, and then they get all upset. Don't skip this step. Here's what you do. Take the first order pair, label it, x sub 1, y sub 1. Take the second order pair, label it, x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay, do that. It will pay off in the end. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to write your formula down. You're going to write down y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Don't skip that step. Write it down. Okay, when you've been doing this 20 some odd years like I have, you can skip that step. But right now, it's the first day we're doing it, you're going to write the formula down every single time. Okay, takes like three seconds. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the values for my x's and y's into my formula. So let's see, m will equal. I'm going to replace my y sub 2 with 6 because that is y sub 2. Minus, it's always a minus because you're finding the difference between the y coordinates. My uh, y1 value is a negative 1. I'm telling you right now, students mess this up, not because they don't know the formula, but because they don't know how to do negatives, and they're very careless, or they write messy, and they lose negatives. Okay, be very, very careful. This is going to be a 6 minus a negative 1, okay? Now, my x's, I'm going to take my x sub 2 value, which is negative 3, and I'm going to subtract the x sub 1 value, which is 4, okay? So this is what mathematically the problem looks like. Now it's just a matter of cleaning this up, okay? So let's do our calculations. 
6 minus a negative 1 turns into plus a positive, so that gives me a rise of 7. On the bottom, my run value is a negative 3 minus 4. That's a negative 7. Okay. Well, a positive 7 divided by a negative 7 simplifies to a slope of negative 1. All right, so that would be my answer, m equals negative 1. Now, this answer just happens to be an integer. Um, because the 7 and 7 divided, but sometimes they won't divide and you'll get a fraction answer, which is fine. If you, I mean, you could put this as a fraction, it'd be negative 1 over 1, but we don't need to do that, okay? So, the answer to that one is negative 1, and you can see by my little sketch up here that, uh, you know, it makes sense that we got a slope of, a, a negative slope, because the line was, in fact, going downhill, all right? That's all there is to it. Let's go to number 6. Here are our two points. First step. Label x1, y1, x2, y2. Second step, I'm going to write my formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to do that for every problem tonight because I'm going to follow my teacher's direction. Okay. Next, plug in your numbers. Here we go. y2 is negative 2 minus, what do I subtract? I subtract y1, which is 3. I'll come back and do that calculation in a moment. On the bottom, I subtract my x's. I start with x sub 2, which is negative 7, and I'm going to subtract from it x sub 1, which is 5. Okay? Now it's just a matter of cleaning this up. And negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5. Negative 7 minus 5 is a negative 12. Did my calculations right there. Okay. And let's see, 5 twelfths doesn't reduce, but a negative over a negative, we would never, ever, ever silly must leave a fraction like that. Because a negative over a negative really means that your slope is positive. So this answer is going to be positive 5 twelfths. I'm curious. What I want to do real quickly is like I did before, is I want to just estimate these two points on a grid just to verify that my slope is positive, that this line is going uphill. So estimating 5, 3 would be over 5 up 3. Negative 7, negative 2 would be here. Yep, and you can see that if I connect those points, this line is going uphill, so my answer should, in fact, be positive. Okay? All right. Good deal. That's all there is to it. Now, obviously, sometimes it can be a little tricky. All right, let's look at number 7. Negative 8, 5, and 4, 5. Okay, again, we're going to label x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. Next step, I'm going to write my formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you need to slow the video down, please do so while you catch up on your notes. All right, substituting in now, let's do our calculations. y2 minus y1, so that's going to be 5 minus the y1, which is 5, and then I'm going to subtract my x's, 4 minus negative 8. All right, let's do our calculations. Let's see, 5 minus 5 is 0. And on the bottom, minus a negative turns into plus a positive, so I get 0 over 12. Now, you will never, ever, ever, see, I'll figure out who watched this video, because I'll see answers left like this. And I know you didn't watch the video if you do that, because you never, ever, ever leave me an answer that's a fraction with the 0 in it. 0 does not belong in fractions, ever, okay? So if you get 0 over 12, you're going to uh, pretty that up and just say the answer is... Zero. Zero divided by anything is zero. If you don't believe me, type it in your calculator. Zero divided by anything is zero. Okay? You can divide zero by any number. That is legal. It's when zero is on the bottom of the fraction that is illegal. Okay? And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But that means this slope is zero. Now, if the slope is zero, oh, what type of line is that? That's one of those special lines. It's not positive. It's not going up. It's not negative. It's not going down. So what type of line is it? Think about z and 0. I'm hoping it's a horizontal line. I'm going to sketch me a graph just to verify this for a second. The point negative 8, 5 would be here. The point 4, 5 would be here. And they, that would, in fact, be a horizontal line with a slope of 0. So I know I am correct. Okay? All right. Let's look at number 8. Here are your two points. Negative 2, ne I'm sorry, positive 2, negative 1, and positive 2, 7. First thing we do is we label our ordered pairs. Okay, do that on your paper. Next thing we do is we write our formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, next step, we plug in 
the numbers into our formula. So we're going to take y2 and we're going to subtract y1. So that would be 7 minus negative 1. Now we're going to take our x's and subtract those. Start with your x sub 2. So 2 minus x1, which is 2. All right, let's pretty this up. 7 minus a negative 1 turns into plus a positive, so that's 8. And on the bottom, 2 minus 2 is 0. Uh-oh. Okay. Now, in the last example, 0 was in the fraction, but the answer was 0. In this example, 0 is in the fraction. This answer is not 0. This answer means the slope, oops, I'm running out of room, is undefined. Okay. I'm going to write that over here so it's a little neater for you. The slope is undefined. Okay? In other words, there is no slope. Okay? So this must be one of those special lines as well. Okay? If the slope is undefined, think about the U and undefined. What type of line is it? Should be a vertical line. Let me graph these two just to verify that. 2 negative 1 will be here. 2 positive 7 will be here. Yep, that is a vertical line, and I know vertical lines have an undefined or no slope whatsoever, okay? So pay attention to numbers 7 and 8. You may want to star those in your notes, okay? Some students get those confused. In number 7, the slope was 0. In number 8, the slope was undefined, okay? Make sure you know the difference in those, okay? Let's do two more just for fun. Uh, let's look at example 9, please. Write down these two points, negative 11, negative 4, and negative 1, 0. First step, x1, y1, labeling my points, and x2, y2. Next step, I'm going to write my handy-dandy little formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now I'm going to substitute in the values to my formula. y2 is 0, and I'm going to subtract y1, which is a negative 4. Watch your signs. Now I'm going to take my x's and subtract those. Start with x sub 2, and you subtract x sub 1. So negative 1 minus negative 11. Watch your signs. Let's pretty this up. 0 minus negative 4. Okay, that turns into plus a positive, so that's actually positive 4. On the bottom, negative 1 minus negative 11. Again, negative 1 stays negative, but this turns into plus a positive. And now I, that gives me negative 1 plus 11. What would that be, 10? Yeah. Now, uh, that slope then needs to be reduced, right? So I believe that's 2 fifths if we reduce that by 2. So the slope of this line is positive 2 fifths. Again, uh, you know me. I um, have to verify that this is correct. So I'm going to very quickly plot these points, negative 11, negative 4, and negative 1, 0. Yep, and I can see that my line should be a positive slope. Okay, that just verifies that all this sign changing stuff that goes on up here, that verifies that I at least ended up with the number, uh, the slope with the right sign. Okay. All right. Last one. I think you got the hang of this. Uh, number 10. 9, negative 2, and 3, 5. First step, label your ordered pairs, please. X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. Second step is to write your formula. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And now we are ready to do or plug in the value. So y2 is 5, and I'm going to subtract a negative 2, right, neatly. On the bottom, I'm going to start with x sub 2, which is 3, and I'm going to subtract x sub 1, which is 9. Okay, let's pretty this up. 5 minus a negative 2 turns into plus positive, so that would be 7. And 3 minus negative 9, you could make that plus negative if you want. I'm just going to get, what, a negative 6, okay? Um, so my answer would be 7 over negative 6. Now, I'll tell you, you'll never see um, a slope written with the negative in the bottom. If one of the numbers in the fraction is negative, then what you're telling me is the slope is negative 7, 6. Okay? We don't write 7 over negative 6. All right? A positive divided by a negative means that the whole value is negative. The slope is negative. Okay? doesn't matter which number is negative. The slope is negative. So you'll always see it in the top, whether you get the answer in the bottom or not. Okay. Um, let me verify that. Okay. Let me plot these points really quickly. 9, negative 2, and 3, 5. Yep. My answer should definitely have a negative slope. Okay. All right. You have some practice problems to work on, I believe.
Okay, yes, right here. Your homework. You will do your three five practice problems that will be given to you, and you will only do the ten problems on the front. Please do not do anything with the back of the handout. We're going to work on that tomorrow. I want all your work shown on the front of your worksheet. Uh, copy in the formula, label in your ordered pairs, show all work. If you come back with answers, you wasted your time if there's no work to go with them. Okay? All right. You guys have a great day.